and the time has come for round two of Kingpin Recreations. In the last month, I've tasked my subscribers with drawing and designing their own SCPs to be redrawn by me, and for their lures to be read out by none other than our SCP narrator, Professor Marcus Plague. So without further ado, let's see what creepy entities make it to our background for the next month. Let's create some chaos. The halls were empty. The only source of movement were the flashing emergency lights that were throwing a harsh shade of red across the otherwise dull and gray corridors. All business around the facility had ceased. Workers at the Foundation were no strangers to instances like this, and as such, immediately broke into their containment breach routines to ensure their safety and negate the threat in a quick and effective manner. However, there was one employee who wasn't too keen on following protocol. The man in the lab coat hugged the wall as tightly as he could. Workplace hazards like this were spelt out clearly in the job description, but that didn't make them any less convenient when they did wind up happening. The man crept slowly down the hall with his back firmly pressed up against the wall, until he was outside the door of the room he was trying to get to. He remained still for a moment, and listened. He was able to make out the beastly snarls and the sounds of papers and files tearing and crumbling. Of course, the threat happened to be in the one room he needed to get into, and he wouldn't have it any other way. He silently thanked whatever god or godlike entity allowed this series of fortunate events to happen. Not only did he not have to get any of his higher-ups giving him a set number of files that he had to read through because of the breach, but now he also had to exercise extreme caution in order to pick up a handful of files. Slowly, the man peeked his head into the door frame and saw that the entity's back was toward the door. He slid into the room, being careful not to kick around or slip on any of the papers that were scattered across the floor. The man crept a little deeper into the room, bent down, and blindly picked up a couple of files, all while keeping his eyes firmly fixed on the creature. He managed to grab three case files that seemed to be unaffected by the entity's rampage, meaning that all the necessary papers seemed to be there. He was about to leave the room when another case file caught his attention. He didn't know what it was, but something about it was urging him to take it. There was only one problem. The file was sitting right underneath the creature. Even more cautiously than he was before, the man crept further into the room until his face was mere inches away from the entity's back. Almost silently, he bent down and slowly slid the file away from the escaped SCP with his foot, wincing as it scraped across the floor. He stopped and looked at the creature to see if it noticed, but the SCP continued to keep its back turned. The man picked up the file and slowly made his way out of the room. He was almost in the clear when his foot landed on a crumpled piece of paper and sent it flying toward the entity. It hit the entity and bounced off his back quietly. For a long moment, nothing happened, and the man thought it was okay. Suddenly, the entity snapped its head around and stared at Professor Marcus Plague, dead in the eyes. The professor stood his ground and stared back at the entity, as if to challenge it, before he bolted out of the room and ran down the hall. Apologies for my tardiness, everyone. While attempting to feed one of the entities, one of the animals escaped and ran through the facility with the SCP in pursuit. I forget which SCP it was, something in the 500s, I think, but to make a long story short, they wound up in the filing room and are hopefully still there. Sit down, don't worry, they'll recontain the entity eventually. As I mentioned, the SCP just so happened to end up in the filing room, which contained the notes I needed for this presentation. So I quietly snuck around, grabbed a few files off the floor, and now I'm here. So once again, my apologies, we'll be jumping around to many different subclasses today. That being said, my name is Professor Marcus Plague, and only Professor Marcus Plague. Let's begin. Item number SCP-FC-741, Object Class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-FC-741, also known as Arrow, is a sentient virus that has the ability to break into this reality. 
I will elaborate more in the next section, but this SCP has a tendency to destroy anything computer-like when it enters this reality. As such, SCP-FC-741's containment is to be completely devoid of all technology, including surveillance cameras. Additionally, no technology is allowed to pass within a 50-foot radius of SCP-FC-741's containment cell. In order to safely monitor Arrow, a complex series of mirrors and one-way glass have been set up around the cell that researchers can see through, but the SCP cannot. However, as a precautionary measure, anyone observing the entity is only allowed to document the notes on traditional media that is to be transferred to digital later on outside of the range of Arrow's containment cell. If SCP-FC-741 is to ever bridge containment, the entire facility is to go into a complete blackout, cutting off all power to any and all electronic devices. Then, a single desktop computer should be put into Arrow's cell and powered on in an attempt to lure the SCP back into containment. Description As previously mentioned, SCP-FC-741 is a sentient virus and as such doesn't have a set height in our reality. However, Arrow appears as a predominantly black creature with glowing blue and purple accents and arms and legs that end in sharp points. The entity is perpetually generating arcs of lightning, and it is speculated that the SCP is an entity of pure energy contained within a shell, which is what we are able to observe. But as I said, this is merely speculation and has not been confirmed yet, and given recent events, most likely isn't on anyone's priority list. Arrow is an SCP that is able to break into our reality whenever it pleases, but requires a portal of its own making to do so. When it comes into our world, it seeks out computers or anything technology-esque to destroy. When it was captured, Foundation scientists were able to prevent it from re-entering the digital realm on its own, and as such, is basically trapped in our reality. Although, some claim that might not actually be a good thing. SCP-FC-741 originally was created for the US government as a means of hacking and retrieving information. However, it wasn't long before Arrow found more pleasure in tearing computers apart. Yes, since Arrow does reside in the digital realm, the SCP is literally destroying its own reality. Furthermore, Arrow is seemingly affected by this and can feel the pain of its world dying. Researchers have been unable to figure out why this is, but the act of doing so appears to be some sort of adrenaline high for the SCP. Now this, this is an SCP I can get behind. I wonder why it does that. Maybe it, maybe it just wants to see how much body can take and push itself to the limits. Or maybe it's just looking a way to cut off access from the digital world so that can solely exist inside of our universe. Once this current containment breach is sorted out, that'll look more into this SCP. Oh, right, the presentation. Um, it One final note here. It says that SCP-FC-741 enjoys licking firewalls. Don't really know what that means. Item number SCP-A-1342. Object class Euclid. Special containment procedures. SCP-A-1342 is to be housed in a 20 by 20 by 20 foot room. This room is to be well furnished with any objects that would normally be found in a common suburban living room. Such furnishings could include couches, tables, lamps, and other things of the sorts. Though, due to the above average size of the entity, being 7 feet in height and weighing almost 200 pounds, any furnishings placed in the room should be custom made following the diagrams and specifications attached to this file. While the entity does not pose an immediate threat, there is still a shroud of mystery surrounding SCP-A-1342, and as such, only personnel with a clearance level of 3 or higher are allowed to enter the SCP's cell. Food is to be provided to the SCP at least 3 times a day. All food now needs to be cleared with the Foundation members assigned to A-1342 following an incident in which Dr. Bright tried to feed the entity something that would have been considered inedible to humans. Although this stunt pulled by Dr. Bright has discovered that the entity shared a digestive tract similar to humans, given his track record, he has been removed from researching and running tests on SCP-A-1342. Description 
SCP-A-1342, or Angelic Demon, is a bipedal humanoid creature that looks like a demon. Go figure. However, the entity also possesses a golden halo that rests behind its head, as well as a set of golden emerald eyes that float above each of its shoulders. Interestingly, no matter what angle the SCP is viewed at, the halo always appears to be on the opposite side of the entity's head in relation to the personnel who is observing it. This phenomenon works regardless of how many people are looking at the entity. Researchers ran tests where up to five people all viewed A-1342 from different angles, and each of the test subjects reported that the halo appeared to be on the other side of the SCP's head. We are unsure how this phenomenon affects the entity, as it seemed to be unbothered with the halo being, by what some test subjects described as, shining right in its eyes. The angelic demon is also adorned in a white and black suit with golden trims and ornaments. When questioned about his attire, which doesn't come off, believe me, we've tried, the entity told personnel that it represented a balance between his angelic and demonic sides. He remained silent when asked if this balance was ever thrown out of whack, though. Other noticeable features of this entity include its abnormal head structure, seemingly shaped to resemble horns, the third eye located in the middle of its forehead, and its tail that ends in a series of fetters. Though the entity has shown no hostility to the Foundation or its members, it still possesses a unique set of skills such as teleportation, super strength, the ability to push and pull objects around, and flight. The Foundation found SCP-A-1342 in England when he fell out of a crack in space that has since been labeled SCP-A-1342-A. Although it closed immediately after A-1342 came out of it, scientists have been studying the nature of the crack for nearly a month prior to A-1342's arrival. Some of the researchers on site apprehended the SCP and brought him to one of the sites. Item number SCP-001-EM Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-001-EM is to be kept in a 5x5 meter containment cell with a rotating shift of two guards situated just outside the entrance to the entity's cell. The interior of the cell is lined with strobe lights that are to be used whenever the entity becomes hostile. Due to its anatomy, the SCP is highly susceptible to bright and flashing lights. Any personnel who wish to enter SCP-001-EM cell for either feeding, research, or other purposes must have a level 2 clearance or higher. Any personnel who do not meet these requirements are to be denied access to the SCP and removed from the cell's vicinity immediately. If the entity behaves on a regular basis, a strong animal, such as a bull or a bear, can be led into the cell for the entity of the hunt. However, the person delivering the animal should be cautious that they are out of the entity's line of sight when the animal's doors open, lest they be caught in the crossfire and become part of the SCP's hunt themselves. Description SCP-001-EM, called The Analog, is a one and a half meter tall entity with a slender figure, long prehensile tail in place of its legs, and a singular large eyeball in place of its head. The creature's eyeball is attached to a flexible neck that allows it to observe all of its surroundings at 360 degrees. The creature's two arms end in claw-like digits that act as the entity's hands. They are extremely tough and can exert up to 4,000 psi, which is enough to cut through brick. The rest of the body is equally tough, being unaffected by bullets and blunt force trauma. The only thing that had shown any results of subduing the entity were flamethrowers though scientists speculate that this is more attributed to the brightness of the flame rather than its heat. SCP-001-EM is a hunter. It has been observed using its tail to strangle and kill a group of Foundation personnel in under five minutes. That being said, it doesn't consume anything it kills, much preferring to kill for sport rather than survival. During times when SCP-001-EM breached containment, documented security footage shows the SCP avoiding the weaker personnel in search for a more challenging hunt. If it does go after an opponent it deems inefficient, the entity has been seen to become extremely disappointed. There have been several instances during containment breaches where Foundation personnel were able to apprehend SCP-001-EM 
while it remained motionless as it was staring at the corpses of several D-Class personnel it considered weak for a solid three minutes. Now I want everyone in this room to take this SCP as a lesson. Never settle for the mediocre when you know you can do better. If you think you can easily kill a fellow Foundation member, don't do it. Find somebody who'll put up a fight. Anyone could just punch through drywall, but you're tougher than that. Punch through concrete instead. Push yourself. The only limiter is you. Right after this next case file, we're all gonna go out and hunt that escaped SCP ourselves. Who's with me? <laughs> okay, have we all calmed down? Good, let's continue. So, quick little tidbit about this last file here before we go out on our witch hunt. I managed to pick up three files undetected, but as I was about to leave, this one caught my eye. I have no idea what's so special about it, so let's take a look. Item number, SCP-CV-564. Oh, hold up. I think this is the one that actually breached containment. Interesting. So, what horribly dangerous entity are we going to be dealing with? Object class? Euclid and Apollyon? Huh. Special containment procedures. Whoa! That is a lot. Please hold for a minute. Flying. Okay, so this particular SCP seems to be part of a larger species, for lack of a better word, and has quite a number of different variations that it can evolve into, including arachnid, aquatic, winged, and titan. A lot of these appear to be the same, with only small differences in size, and the type of environments, and the frequency and contents of its meals. For the sake of time, and to fill you in on what we're going to be dealing with, I'm going to read the containment procedures of a standard infected, as that seems to be the one that breached containment. <clears throat> Special containment procedures. The standard infected variants of SCP-CV-564 are to be contained within an 18-foot large cell that is lined with a thick layer of acidic-proof titanium to prevent the SCP from using its acidic saliva to escape. At least once every six hours, a D-Class personnel or a small animal anything similar in size to a chicken or a gopher, is to be put in the containment cell to feed the entity. Researchers must make sure that the entity is eating the provided food and not trying to infect it with its parasites. Should the entity try to affect its meal, then the heat lamps installed within the cell are to be activated, which will kill the parasites and cause some discomfort to the SCP itself. Heat lamps are to be used on all variants of the SCP if similar scenarios arise in their respective cells. Description SCP-CV-564 are a species of otherworldly parasites that were discovered in a place called the Dead Zone, though its specific home remains unknown. SCP-CV-564, also known as the Corpses, are the only living beings within the Dead Zone. The Corpses as a species are able to infect other living beings and assimilate them into their hive minds while also altering their appearance. As with the special containment procedures, I will use the standard infected as a descriptor for this SCP. After taking over a bipedal being, such as a human, the infected human body will begin to twist and mangle and sprout a whole bunch of limbs, including, but not limited to, human hands, spider legs, spikes, wings, and even cannons that can shoot acidic blasts that are capable of eating through steel in a matter of seconds. The corpses are even able to delay the infection if they so choose to. After the SCP infects this victim through their mouth, or in some cases, <clears throat> other places, the victim can appear unaffected by the parasite if said parasite is trying to infiltrate an area, such as an SCP site. Other variations of the SCP will take on different appearances, ranging from spiders to flying or aquatic creatures with the titans being the peak of the evolution in this species. However, the species as a whole shares a common weakness to extreme heat, and with enough exposure, will combust. Moving on to the Nexus. The Nexus are not infected, but rather usually the leaders and creators of the hive minds of corpses. 
What separates them from the infected is their ability to speak in full sentences, as well as their telepathic and telekinetic abilities, the latter two of which are inhibited thanks to Foundation technology. The Foundation first became aware of the species during an orbital exposition where they met with someone who claimed to survive an encounter with the corpses. A task force was sent to investigate the moon they were said to be seen on, and though no personnel returned from that mission, they were able to provide us with information on that species. Afterwards, the O5 Council sent a team of staff and benevolent SCPs that were able to subdue the Nexus in the core of the moon and bring it to an orbital site for questioning. However, when asked what goals their species tried to fulfill, the Nexus responded with, and I quote, Why should we have a reason for why we infect, why we consume? Will explaining some complex motivations make what we do better in your feeble mortal eyes? We are beyond the fragile chains that hold you in this prison you call life. We are the natural progression in the evolution of all beings, we are legion, we are many, and soon we will have all that is and ever will be. Well, I think that's enough for today. Uh, we won't be going on that SCP hunt after all. Uh, if you would like to hear about any specific SCPs, Feel free to comment them in the request box down below, and I'll maybe, probably, try to see if I can get my hands on the files. Kind of. Probably not really. Oh, and do be careful on your way out, and maybe grab a heat gun if you can. After the O5 Council sent a team of staff and benevolent SCPs, afterwards the O5 Council sent a team of staff and benevolent benevolent. Afterwards, the O5 Council sent a team of staff and benevolent SPPs, SPPs, as it seemed to be unbothered with the halo being by what some test subjects considered as unbothered with the halo being by what some tub seemed unbothered with the halo being by what some tub. I want to say just thank you to everyone who submitted. All the submissions were incredible, amazing creativity across the board. And a special thank you to those who were chosen. Fantasy Creed, who has a YouTube channel that I'll link in the description. Ark, Emerald Inferno, and Rianne Williams. You all will be getting a message from me soon with your redesigns, and I hope you enjoy them. And all that's left to do is give you the prompt for the April recreations. As some of you may already know, this month I want you to design your own Fakemon, even though I think Fokemon with an F-A-U-X would make more sense, but I digress. Design your own Fakemon, including one headshot and one body shot, and including any lore abilities and typing and whatever else you feel necessary to help me understand your drawing. All the details will be on the screen, and the submission deadline is April 19th. That's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. My name is Kingpin Creations, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.